So we are left with two more standards out of all the 46 standards that is 1, 3402. Assurance reports on control set service organization and 402 where we have to discuss about uh, audit considerations relating to an entity using service organization. So what is this exactly is about? SA 315, if you recollect, the auditor has to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence regarding operating effectiveness of internal controls that are affecting the financial statements. Correct? Huh? Suppose the entity is having some payroll expenditure, the best example for service organizations thing. Generally with respect to payroll, we have to maintain lots of records. Especially if the company is having huge number of employees, they have to maintain payroll records. So many kinds of statutory reports will be there as per PF authority, as per ESA authority, as per various other welfare authorities. A company has to maintain so many payroll records, which is a very typical task. And specifically, people who are expertise in payroll were very tight demand in the market. Getting it? So many don't understand how exactly payroll functions works, all that what records they have to maintain. They are not well versed with that. Now, there are many companies which are exclusively providing these payroll services where you just have to give the company the list of new employee added into the organization, list of an employee who left the organization, just update me that and give me the employee contractual agreement, enough. What are all the legal formalities, Provident Fund, ESI, TDS, everything our company will take care of. You just have to, we will send you every month a report to your company. We will every month send a report. Ours is a service organization. We are providing services to a company. What services we are providing payroll? <coughs> every month, you just have to give me few dates, few, very few inputs. One, employee agreement you give me. When he joined, what is the reporting date you just tell me. And if an employee left the organization, when he left, and his related agreement, employment agreement. And attendance data alone, you give me every month. Enough. If you give me these five inputs, who is your employee? Uh, maybe is his PAN card and other card also you give me for my documentation. <coughs> if you give me these inputs, my company will look into what are all the formalities that are applicable for these employees. Entire documentation we maintain. Every month we will tell you how much salary you just have to prepare a check for, for that employee credit. So we will tell you, you just give me attendance data. So mention your payroll cycle. Decide your payroll cycle on from which date to which date you will generally process payroll. So payroll cycle you just you just give me. So the data you give me within one two days our team will work on it and then give you back the entire data of all the employees to whom in that month how much salary you have to pay. Net amount to be credited. And we will also give you how much TDS under which section you have to remit to department. How much provident fund you have to remit to PF authority. How much ESI you have to remit to so and so authorities. All that also we will give you. You just have to click and pay. That's it. Everything is automated. You just have to click and pay. Entire processing and all I will be doing. So mine is called as a service organization. The entity which is using my services are called as a user entity. Well, what we call him as user entity. Now, I am the auditor of a user entity. As a part of audit, I have to cover all aspects of the financial statements. One of the important aspects in financial statements is what? Employee benefit expenses. Whether company is processing employee benefit expenses correctly or not, I went and asked. Management said, sir, we are not doing, sir, that ADP, there is a company called ADP, Automatic Data Processing, Automated Data Processing, there is a very big company in the world, ADP Incorporation, US, it has branches in India, it has a branch in Chennai, it has a branch in Hyderabad, so many, so many places, so ADP Incorporation is there, so this company is expert in payroll, so the company told me, sir, we are not doing our employee payroll, sir, we are only paying, sir, entire payroll accounting, Entire payroll related provident for liabilities, G TDS liabilities, TDS compliances, everything is taken care of by ADP. Sir. We just have to pay. That's it. From our pocket, only funds will flow. That's it. We don't have a separate department for payroll. We don't maintain any documentation. All that. If you want the summary, I will get it from the service organization. Generally, my responsibility is to verify whether the company which I am doing audit, example, Tata Consultancy Services, which has 6 lakh employees, which has 6 lakh plus employees. I have to get an assurance whether payroll cost is correctly calculated to all the 6 lakhs employees as part of my audit. I need to get an assurance. But that is not being done by this company. 
that is being performed by ADP Incorporation Service Organization. Now, how what should I do? SCF 402 says, auditor's responsibilities in, in relation to services used by user entity of service organization. If user entity is using services of service organization, what is your responsibility then? Very simple. User entities know they are service organizations typically. Now, we, we want to, so generally here who is doing the entire work? User entity, sorry, service organization is doing. We immediately told our company, do one thing, sir. I will go to service organization directly. I will send my articles. There, our entire documentation, everything is there, right? Our team will go there. They will do payroll audit and then come back and then give me a report. Of course, in the meantime, I'll be doing purchases, sales, all other manufacturing, everything. Finally, we'll give the opinion. So we called, we made a call to the service organization. Sir, we will do audit like this and all. Service organization management politely replied, sir, that's not possible. We are doing, you are just one client for us. As a service organization, I am providing for more than 1000 companies these services. If at all, just like you remaining 999 company auditors also failed to want to come and do the audit, I have to continuously provide data services to auditors of 1000 clients. Yes or no? So if every auditor want to come and check how, how our controls are, how our processing is, how we are working, if at all they want to check, should we, should we work on this or should we sit and answer auditors queries of all our clients? How it is possible? Then I want assurance. How can I get assurance that you have implemented proper systems, you have implemented proper controls so that our clients payroll process and all you are correctly doing. What systems and controls you implemented? Sir, if you want that data, I will give you controls list. Whatever systems we implemented, whatever controls we implemented, I will give you a data. ADP sent me the data. I read. Okay, the systems were very, very proper. The policies and processes are very proper. Proper control objectives were very proper. Implementation, everything is good. How do I know it is true? Don't worry, sir. We'll give an assurance report. We'll give an assurance report. We have our assurance auditor who performed an engagement under 3402. Who performed an engagement under 3402. About whatever I described. I showed you, right? These are the systems I implemented. These are the processes I'm doing. These are the objectives I have achieved. I'm going to achieve. So I have showed you all these, uh, you know, processes, all that. So uh, my user audit, my, my my assurance auditor, he will give a report on this, and he prepared a report. We forwarded this report to all our clients to whom we are providing payroll services, so that all my clients and their auditors under 402 they can use these reports. Now you see, sir, who is who prepared this report? Sir, he is also like you, a chartered accountant. He is also governed by same ICA ethics, all that. So he is also governed by ICA guidelines, all that. So you need not worry, you can trust him, he is a competent guy. So we, so we will check whether the person who has given this assurance report, how far is his competence, all that, we will check. Accordingly, we will use his report. Now, these reports are two types. These reports are called as SOC reports. Systems and Controls Audit reports, nothing but. Getting it? Systems and Controls Audit, that, that's what they call it, as Systems and Organizations Controls Audit reports. SOC reports we call it as you worldwide is very popular. SOC. SOC SOC report type 1, SOC report type 2. Now two reports were there. Now first question what I ask of the service organization is sir, I am the auditor of TCS sir. And I want to check payroll expenditure. And you are processing entire payroll. And how you are processing, I want to know you send me the entire data, how you do the work. I want an assurance that you do the work in the same manner. You send me a report that. Assurance Auditor said, whatever management of service organization described the systems, whatever controls they described, whatever control objectives they stated, everything is proper, like that Assurance Auditor gave. Assurance Auditor gave only one thing, sir. He said, whatever you showed is correct. How do I know whether they are operating effectively? Okay, you want operating effectiveness also? Fine. I will, the ADP, service organization, called Assurance Auditor. Dear Assurance Auditor, you gave an opinion on the description of the system. How we describe, what we described, what system we implemented, what objectives we are following. All that you verified and then gave a report. Can you please test these controls, whatever we tested. Can you please test our systems, whether they are operating effectively or not. And then give an assurance on operating effectiveness of the controls and systems implemented at service organization. Assurance auditor said, yeah fine sir, I can do that also. That is type 2. Type 2 report of assurance auditor contains operating effectiveness of Controls that are implemented at service organization. The type 1 report just describes assurance auditors assurance on yes, 
the controls are like this the controls are designed the controls are implemented the controls are being followed whether they are operating effectively or not i am not talking if you want me to talk whether they are operating effectively or not i need to test the controls so a service organization can give two kinds of assurance report either one type 1 report or type 2 report now as an auditor of my client tcs am i okay with the type 1 report or am i okay with the type 2 report is a matter of professional judgment which report you want most of the cases auditors of user entities want type 2 report most of the times because we don't just want what, what systems they implemented and you are giving yes they have implemented this no or this are they effectively working we want to know that moreover we have to give under 143 subsection 3 clause i whether internal financial controls are operating effectively or not as a part of that we have, we have to take we have to check operating effectiveness controls which are outsourced to you Leo, all of you this is the entire standard 402 is talking about user auditor of user entity using the soc report given by assurance auditor of service organization which is performed under 3402 got the connection yes now i am only the 402 auditor and i am only the 3402 auditor for the other entity no problem no problem absolutely because both are independent audit assurance engagements there is no such restriction but generally here there is a slight conflict to my you are talking about operating effectiveness of controls right you should not be involved in designing these controls if at all you are involved in designing the controls at service organization and then and then providing assurance reports that is not permitted of course maker and checker should be different that's a very rare uh, you don't think to that extent but okay whatever i told the story understood clear now with this backlog if you read this with this backdrop if you read this entire 402 and 3402 you will understand damn cool the start got the story now 402 i have given i have made his notes on this long ago so earlier the standard is much more in depth because earlier the standard is there for us but it's not there in the main book of the ICA. it's there in pronouncement from pronouncement i prepared this notes so now you have 402 formally kept in the final syllabus in that the definitions which i stroke which i which i strike of here that is not applicable like earlier in pronouncement it is a much more in depth 402 sub service organization means service organization using another service organizations work some it related works getting it we should get a service organization type 1 type 2 and we should also get sub service organization type 1 and type 2 so much in depth that is <coughs> now so who what are the definitions service organization means what this note i'll upload in my website also getting it i'll upload it <coughs> So, so what is a service organization service organization is nothing but a third party organization that provides services to our client our client is we call him as what user entity which are part of information systems relevant to financial reporting so they are providing services to our user entity see there is there is another service organization which is providing annual maintenance services to the air conditioners that is not relevant for financial reporting yes or no payroll processing they are doing is relevant for my financial reporting user entity who is a user entity the entity that uses a service organization whose financials are being audited by user auditor means we are auditing the tcs company user auditor auditor of user entity we call service organizations assurance auditor is the right we simply refer him as what service auditor an auditor who provides an assurance report on controls of service organizations at the request of service organization so he is the one who is providing assurance report on the controls of service organization why he is giving assurance report because service organization requested it understood see definitions are logically framed next reports from service organization who will get these reports user auditors of user entities will obtain from the service auditors of service organizations these two types of report type one report on description of design after report on description and design of controls at service organization getting it so it's a just a report on description and design of control whether the control is operating effectively it is not covered so what systems they have established what objectives they have established what processes they have implemented management prepared a list of all that of service organization whatever management stated is it genuine 
service auditor have given an assurance report. Yes, management whatever stated is genuine. Are they operating effectively? I don't know. That is type 1 report. So type 1. This entirely, by the way, who will, who will, whose responsibility is for description and design of controls? Management of service organization. So management of service organization gives a description about service organization systems, their control objectives and related controls that have been designed and implemented at a specific date. You want to get an assurance on a particular date. If you want on that date, whether service organization controls and all are proper, enough. And what is type and report? First, you know, management will describe about service organization systems, controls, objectives, everything at a particular date. On the date, the whatever <coughs> a report by service auditor conveying a reasonable assurance, which includes opinion on description of systems, controls, and related organizations and suitability of them. Whether the control systems, objectives, related controls, whatever they implemented, whatever management described. Description means what? Management described. Which management? Service organization. On that auditor is giving an assurance report. Is it genuine or not? Whereas in type 2, same entire matter as it is will come. That's why I mentioned like this. Getting it on a specified date or throughout a specified period and their operating effectiveness throughout the period. In type 2 report, how the controls are operating in a particular period, time frame. Are they effectively operating or not also? They will tell, management will describe. Service auditor has to give opinion on operating effectiveness. And of course, description of service auditors, test of controls and results thereof. What test of control service auditors perform? What are the results thereof? All that also service auditor will inform in the type 2 report. For that, we will see type 2 report how it looks like. <coughs> now, first now we will see example of type 1 report. Just a minute, I think type 1 report is somewhere above. Okay, first type 2 report I will show them. Below I think it will be, it will be the type 1. Yeah, type 1 service auditor's assurance report. You see 3402. This is given in 3402. Assurance reports is dealt on service organization controls by which standard? 3402. 3402 is a complementing standard to 402. Now, 2. XYZ organization scope. We have engaged to report on XYZ organization description of description that are given at so and so pages in the description document. We did not perform any procedures regarding operating effectiveness on the face of the report itself in type 1 report they are mentioning we did not test operating effectiveness by the way whose responsibility for preparing the description of whatever controls related assertions service organization is responsible service auditor responsibilities were to express opinion on the organization's description and on the design of controls related to control objectives now so and so control objective is there to meet this objective, we should design a control. Whether the design of control is suitable or not for the control objective, that alone they will check. That alone they will mention. Whether the control is suitable or not. Suitable control means what? Very simple. Suppose at D-Mart, no, we purchased goods or a big bazaar, we purchased goods. At the billing counter, exit counter, exit gate. They should check, right? They should check the bill, item by item. What items you are carrying outside in the trolley, they should check. Getting it done. Why are they checking? To identify any unbilled items. What is the control objective here? To identify unbilled items. What they are doing? They are checking bill and item by item counting. So that any leftover item will be detected and billed accordingly. This is the control which they implemented. This is a control objective. Suitable or not? That's it. Okay. So, auditor responsibility in type 1 report is whether service organization's description of the control design of the control and related control objectives whether uh, in we conducted i mean uh, in based on our procedures so he just mentioned that we conducted our engagement uh, i think this is not required it involves performing processes to obtain evidence about disclosures in the description of its systems and design of controls the management will prepare a document what are the controls 
or how they design, what are the control objectives, how our controls, whatever we designed are suitable for the object. They talk about all this. Service auditor will give an opinion on this, whether it is correct or not. He will not test whether these controls are working as it is. Getting it? So that's it. And <coughs> limitation of controls. What is this? XYZ service organization description is to meet common needs of range of customers and their auditors. May not therefore include every aspect of the system that each and every customer may consider important for their own environment. And because of their nature, controls at service organization may not prevent or detect all errors and frauds. 3402, if you look at the preface introduction, they clearly say 3402 audit is performed by service auditors. They provide assurance report with a view to make that assurance report useful for user auditors of user entities. In that context only 3402 is adapted. Suppose if a company called me just to check about operating effectiveness of internal controls, that will not come under 3402. That will not come under 3402. Which, which, which controls the testing comes under 3402? If I am testing controls described and implemented and objectives all that, where I am giving a report which is being used by user auditor of user entities. In that context only 3402 engagement we take. If at all a company randomly called me, sir, you just test controls whether they are working. That's an agreed upon processor. What is it actually? It's an agreed upon processor. Clear? Now, after having an idea of agreed upon procedure, you will understand. Agreed upon procedures can be related to non-financial information. We have seen in the preface itself. Fine opinion. Our opinion has been formed on the basis of the matters outlined in this report. The criteria used in forming are those described at so-and-so page. So, what, what we are saying? In our opinion, in all material respects, the description made by the management about the control objectives, controls implemented, all that, fairly present the so-and-so systems designed and implemented as it did. The controls related to control objectives were suitably designed. Whatever controls they designed and implemented, what is a control objective? Both are same magic, suitable. Whether they are suitable or not, we just have to comment. Whether they are working effectively or not, whether the actual security guard is checking item by item bill, that we didn't check. But the ask company told me, security guard duty is like this, sir. Uh, okay, billing, of, I mean, uh, that control objective is no unbuilt item should go out. And what is the control they implemented? They told security guards, they educated them to check item by item. Control objective, control implemented, both are suitable. Whether the control is really working or not, I didn't go and observe. Getting it? In time to report, I'll give observe and then give a opinion. Mm. And remember, this report you see, type 1 report, clearly intended users and purpose. This report is purely intended for customers who have used the service organizations, a system and their auditors, user entities and user auditors only. These reports are, these reports are not for outsiders. 3402 is only for 402 purpose, not for any other purpose. Hey, getting it? Petrol bungalow zero park mother path it okay. You I mean you didn't understand. You're understanding, right? Yeah. The Santa Ram joke actually. Point. <coughs> so type two report. In type two report, I'm not I'm not I'm not uh, going inside depth. <coughs> yeah, service or uh, opinion you see. You see opinion, third, third point is added. We, we tested the controls and they are operated effectively throughout the period. <coughs> Not only that, what controls you tested briefly also you should tell. Description of test of controls, what controls you tested you should tell. Getting it? So what controls you have tested, nature and Nature, timing and results of these test of controls. And of course, intended users, that's a common point. Clear? So in case of type 2 report, in the opinion, you talk about operating effectiveness and you also talk about what tests you perform. Now look at this 402. <coughs> now there is something else called complementary user entity control. Complementary... Just a minute. One minute, okay? Yeah, let's proceed. Let's proceed this. 
So complementary user entity controls. What do you mean by that? Here it is given complementary user entity controls refers to controls that the service organization assumes. Means service organization they will take up. Okay. In the design of its uh, service which are implemented by user entities and necessary to achieve control objectives are identified in the description of the system. Suppose in one of the system the control objective is to pay right amount of salary to the employee so that only for the actual number of days work the salary will be credited. For this, this is the control objectives. For that what is the control they should implement? Attendance. And how many, how the employee log in work from home, how for work from home employees the attendance is calculated. So is it based on the system login time like that? Some control will be there, some control would have been implemented. Look at that control. Now user entity says, sir, attendance and all data I will give you once. You calculate everything and then send us the workings, final workings before freezing it. So this kind of control we implemented in the service organization. We told service organization. I know generally you will not give any draft uh, workings and all to anybody first but you give me draft workings only once you provide me draft workings our, we have one HR team or some one payroll guy is there who is an expert one, for, one fellow is there he will just check it we cannot do each and everything but we will check it so this is a complementary user entity control just before finalizing one extra control that we implemented in service organization we implemented in the sense we just see control means what nothing but it's a policy getting the point it's nothing but a procedure if I ask you to take a note, that's a control. That's a policy and procedure. Control is not some hypothetical term and all. Getting the point. Next. Now, before when I'm taking class, whether it's recording or not, I'll be checking. That's a control. Control objective is so that recording will come, so that I can upload on YouTube. Getting it. So everything. The so control is processes. All processes. That they are nothing but controls. All policies and procedures. So that's actually complementary user entity controls. Generally, many entities will have a CUC, CUC, complementary user entity controls. Now, in this notes, we will discuss. That's enough. Now, so what auditor has to check? First of all, how do you know? The company know there are many service organizations who are providing many services to our entity. How do you know they are relevant for financial reporting? So our entity is taking survey air conditioners, maintenance services. Our entity is taking supply of manpower services from various service organizations. There are many services that our entity is getting from various service organizations. How do you know which is relevant for financial reporting? The following factors. You know, if uh, the services is affecting significant class of transactions or if the service is dealing with uh, processing of transactions, or if the service is dealing with any events or conditions, or if the service is dealing with the financial reporting process, accounting estimates and disclosures, and if the service is related to accounting records. <coughs> if services provided by service organization is dealing with any of these, then, then I generally assume that that is relevant for financial reporting. Then I will ask for type 1, type 2 report all that. Now a AC service provider, air conditioners service provider, AMC service providers, they have given their staff training on how to clean the AC, how to wash it, everything and all, jet wash and all, how to do all that. What are, what is the system they are following? What controls are implemented so that the staff can do cleaning exactly the same with that and all is not relevant for me. Operational aspect. That is operational audit team will take care. Operational audit team will take care whether ACs are cleaned properly by the AMC provider or not. Whether our company staff related vehicles, buses and all, whether they are maintained properly or not, operating audit team will take care of. That's a different subject altogether. Now, what is the object under 402 then? Obtain an understanding of nature and significance of services by service organization that affect user entities internal control relevant to audit. Which controls are generally relevant to audit? Those controls that affect financial reporting process are relevant for audit. Controls are various types. Operating controls, compliance controls, financial controls. Mainly we are concerned with what? Financial controls. 
and design and perform procedures responsive to those risks. So, if at all you identify any risk, pro pro perform procedures to address those risks, whether it turns into any <coughs> irregularity in the controls working, getting elapses, all that. So, now the user auditor shall obtain an understanding of services provided by service organization. This itself can be asked as a four marks question. This itself, what are the factors? What are the factors that affects users auditors decision about relevance of services provided by service organization? This itself can be asked as a four marks question. These were all asked in last five, seven, five to seven items. In the past ten items, almost in every standard, every paragraph is tested. Past ten to fifteen items is the you check, you will be finding it. Hardly ten percent of a particular standard might have not been covered. Okay. Next. So the user auditor, the user auditor shall obtain an understanding of services. What you need to understand? Enquire our organization where we are doing audit about services received from service organization. What is the nature of service payroll and their significance? Nature and materiality of the transactions or payroll cost itself is 25% of the total cost in the PNL. Degree of interaction between service organization and user entity, sir. We just interact monthly once, sir. In the initial meeting itself, we told what are all the requirements, all the agreement we have entered into. Now it became a routine process. Monthly one day we will just meet and then we just settle all this. What is the nature of relationships and terms and conditions between service organization and relationship? Sir, with the with the service organization, TCS, do you have any financial relationship, any business relationship apart from this payroll processing? And what are the terms and conditions? Nothing but get service organization plus uh, TCS uh, agreement. Getting it. If the auditor is unable to obtain sufficient understanding from user entities, for primarily we ask user entity. Enquire user entity about what services. You see, if the auditor shall obtain an understanding, they will give you like this. <coughs> <coughs> Write about understanding of services performed by service auditor from user entity. You should first understand what is the nature of services they are providing. Who will give you that information? Management of the user entity. So, enquire the user entity management about services provided by them. So, what are they providing? What is the importance? What is the interaction that you have? What is the relationship you have? What are the terms and conditions? All that. Suppose if you are not getting understanding from the user entity. User entity is not, sir, that and something they implemented, sir, some process they follow, sir. I am not able to understand. Accountant replied me this. Then, get a type 1 report or type 2 report. If not, type 1 and type 2 you are not convinced. Contact the service organization through user entity. This is called external confirmation. If that is also not possible, if that is also not feasible or that you are not satisfied, visiting the service organization or sending another auditor to the service organization for obtaining information about relevant controls at the service organization. Suppose they will give an exam in this question. As a part of, you are appointed as an auditor of so and so entity which is taking services of service organization. You have inquired the management of user entity to know the services provided by service organization but you are not getting sufficient appropriate information from the user entity. What procedures you should perform? Obtain type 1 or type 2 report. Contact service organization through the user entity. Visiting service organization for obtaining understanding about controls at service organization. Using another auditor for obtaining information about the service organization. These are the, this is the answer. Another 4 marks question might come like this. Getting it? Now, how to use a type 1 report or type 2 report? Before using type 1 or type 2 report, the user auditor shall satisfy. No, you are using his report, right? Who gave this report? First, you should understand. Right? What is his professional standing? You should understand, right? You can't directly believe, right? Yes or no? Service auditor's professional competence and independence. Whether, okay, type 1 report, type 2 report, all this is fine. Who is that auditor? What is his relationship with the organization? If at all, they both are not at all. If at all, service auditor is not independent at all. I will not believe his opinion. The adequacy of standards under type 1 and type 2 report was issued. Like, uh, what is the standards he is following for issuing type 1 type 2 report? Suppose he is following, he is also a member of ICI and he is following 3402 standard. I will absolutely trust that. If the user auditor decided to use type 1 and type 2, okay, you understood his professional competence, you understood that he is also a member of ICI, you completely, you completely decided to rely upon his report. Something like expert or not. Okay, he shall evaluate whether the date of the report and the period covered, getting it, is it appropriate for auditor's purpose? Suppose type 1, type 2 report is a 3 years ago it was there, that report. How far it is relevant for my latest year audit? 
the sufficient appropriate evidence provided by the report for understanding of the user entity internal control relevant to audit. In the type 1 and type 2, they clearly described the controls that they implemented. How far I am able to understand so that I can discharge my audit duty properly. Determine whether the user entity has designed and implemented complementary user entity controls. If so, check, I mean, test the operating effectiveness of complementary user entity controls also. For complementary user entity controls, we must check effectiveness. We must check your effectiveness of complementary because this is a control implemented by our entity at the service organization. Since controls are being monitored by our entity, we have to test their operating effectiveness. Whether it's a type 1, type 2, doesn't matter. You service auditor will not test operating effectiveness of complementary user entity controls. Complementary user entity controls effectiveness will be tested by whom? User auditor. Because who implemented that? User entity. I am bothered about the entire this standard, all that for the controls that are designed and implemented by service organization. There I want their auditor's report. Controls implemented by our team in the service organization, I will only test whether they are operating effectively or not. Getting it? Finally, you have to perform test of controls at service. If auditor is required to obtain assurance about operating effectiveness of controls, it can be obtained in the following manner. Like you, you there, this is a question like this. On this, a question can come like this. So, you found that company is using services of service organization and you are desirous of getting assurance on operating effectiveness of services, I mean operating effectiveness of controls implemented at service organization. What are the procedures? One, why should I test? Type 2 report I will get. Two, if type 2 report and all is not there, service organization is permitting me. I will go and perform test. If, if I am not, if for me, if the time is not possible, I will send another auditor on the behalf of user auditor. And if at all you decided, let me use type 2 report as an evidence for operating effectiveness. Suppose you decided, type 2 report I will use as an, as an evidence for operating effectiveness. What is the date and period it which belongs to? Is it appropriate? Same point, right? If you want to use type 1 or type 2 report, whether the reports are dealing with which period and which date. Same here also. For type 2, if you want to use to which day, on which date and period it belongs to. Test operating effectiveness of complementary user entity controls because these controls testing you only have to do. If at all complementary user entity controls are there, user auditor only will have to test their operating effectiveness. Service auditor will not touch that. Because the controls are implemented by you, not by service organization. Adequacy of time period covered by test of controls. You check. When the service auditor has performed test of controls, for what period he performed? Is it adequate for the purpose of your audit? Check whether for your audit is it adequate. In our audit, we need to get an assurance whether the controls are implemented throughout the year or operating effectively. That is the objective. For example, whether he tested throughout the year or not, you need to check. Evaluate service auditor's report on TOC performed by him. Check his report finally. So this is how you need to use type 2 reports. So if you are deciding to use type 2 report, what points you should you shall evaluate? You shall evaluate on which date and period the report is dealing with and you should test complementary user entity controls and whether the type time period covered by test of control, service auditors has performed, this is the date on which I perform test of control. Is that period okay nearer to your audit period? Check out. Finally, reporting by user auditor. Suppose no. After evaluating type 1 report or type 2 report, all that, you understood that the controls are implemented properly at service organization, payroll cost, you don't have any doubt at all. Absolutely fine. You decided to give unmodified opinion in that context. Do you like, do you need to refer to the type 1, type 2 report in your audit report? Is there any necessity when you decided to give unmodified opinion? Nothing. Suppose, after using type 2 report, you found that in that service organization, some controls related to payroll are not operating effectively. That will bring material misstatements in payroll processing. And if you and you understood that, that will no doubt impact material misstatement in the financials, but not pervasive. You will have to give <coughs> you will have to give which opinion in the audit report relating to payroll? Qualified opinion. In the basis for qualified opinion, you will mention. We have used a type 2 auditor's report of service auditor. In that he has given a flaw. He has identified, he has given a modified opinion on the operating effectiveness of controls. This will have an impact on so and so provident fund calculation cost. To this extent, our opinion is modified. In our opinion, I mean, that's what we mentioned in basis for paragraph. Now, here we are referring about service auditor, right? By referring about service auditor of service organization, will our responsibility reduces? Mention that also. 
this reference to service auditor does not reduce the responsibility of the user auditor with respect to obtaining evidence about operating effectiveness of controls ultimate responsibility to obtain evidence on operating effectiveness and ultimate responsibility for the opinion you are expressing is with you you are using toc1 sorry soc1 report soc2 i mean uh, type 1 type 2 reports leo you see that's why i have given it is exactly like sa620 reporting requirement is similar to sa620 so that time i prepared from pronouncement these paragraphs is what i have read and made, made this material this is enough for you almost in our book whatever they have, we have covered in the smart notes or main book same points are covered here clear all of you understood fine i'll give you one single one simple task 3402 you have to read on your own i'm telling you 3402 looks exactly like this 3402 is drafted on the premise of remember 3402 assurance engagement on controls at service organization provided by us is purely that report is being used by whom user auditors of user entities in that context only we are doing that work we are not doing this work just to, to give opinion on operating effectiveness of internal controls at service organization if at all we were appointed to give opinion on operating effectiveness of controls at <coughs> service auditor sorry uh, service organization that may come under probably 3400 non financial information we adapt to that extent 3400 standard and then we provide assurance that's a different d40 it is specifically drafted where service auditor will be appointed by service organization and where he has to give a type 1 or type 2 report which is ultimately going to be used by their client auditors but that object to 3400 is drafted now 3400 is applicable for whom service auditor now there we will be discussing that entire standard from the point of view of service auditor their service auditor will be testing whose things service auditor will be testing organization controls what they described what they implemented is it suitable are they tested i mean are they implemented effectively they will test so they will talk about test of controls all that are you getting the point and finally after he obtain evidence if everything is fine he will give unmodified report otherwise he will give a modified report that's it that is there in 3402 over clear so effectively we have finished all the standards all the standards in fact more than what they covered in 1 to 11 chapters in ca inter, ca final book more than that i've covered because many 45 501 501 5, all that content also i spoke here it is not covered for you actually in final material but i spoke clear that's it